That was actually Martin Garrett. He was laughing loudly back there. It, it still is. Most of you probably have not never heard of the reality television show Let's Design. How many of you have heard of it? Perhaps you haven't heard of it because it's based in India. However, $20.3 million of our tax dollars went to the show's creators last year. My suspicion is that with the success of India's television and, and, and uh, movie industry, they didn't need $20 million of our tax dollars. We could save a few pennies there. Again, the President didn't come up with this, but I know as soon as he gets my memo, he'll handle it. But how about this? How about $21 million to, to take care of indoor air quality in Indonesia? You can't make these things up, really. As a matter of fact, they covered the indoor air quality on less design that they did in India. These are real. Our government does things like fund the study of marijuana and malt liquor's effect on college co-eds. <laughs> and you can't make these things up. Washington still continues to do this. But here's the worst part. Eric Holder is going to have to lay off Border Patrol agents. Now, we might have been able to reduce the number of Border Patrol agents if there were less guns and rifles pointed at them as a result of Fast and Furious. <laughs> Air traffic controllers. Now, is there anyone here that works for the TSA? Good. I might get out of here alive on the airplane. <laughs> Ray LaHood is a Republican in the administration getting ready to retire. And he tells me we've got to lay off air traffic controllers. But when I look at the whole of an airport, I know that there are half a dozen people at the tower. But I also know there are half a million people, it seems, standing in blue suits there when I try to go through security. <laughs> Four years after 9-11, those of us who are going through security regularly at airports, and most of you fit that, know that there were lines and there were people looking at everything, and, and it wasn't pleasant. But there were only about, other, statutorily, there were 17 or 18,000 uh, TSA individuals, and plus some, some in the home office. So it didn't work great, but let's just call that 20,000 for round numbers. Today, about the same amount of people fly from about the same number of airports. And there are 68,000 people in TSA. Do you think just maybe under sequestration, we could trip that number a little bit to save our air traffic control? <laughs> the fact is, I'm going to be bipartisan for a moment. Because it's important. This is about the soul of the Republican Party. And the soul of the Republican Party is based on two things. The individual liberties we fought for since we fought to give freedom to people who couldn't vote for us, who didn't have the same color of skin as people who could vote. That was who we were when it wasn't politically popular. In fact, it was politically devastating. We need to continue to be that at all times. It's the reason that social conservatives need to continue being social conservatives at the core of that which matters most. And it does mean that we will be aligned with people who want to come to this country, play by the rules, and add to the future of this great country. At the same time, we have no future to offer the rest of the world unless we're economically solvent, unless we're able to keep our house fiscally in order. That means we are going to have to make trimmings in a lot of areas. Now, people will tell you sequestration is awful. Carl said we talked about it. Tom, everyone is, is almost making light of, of the fact that, you know, listen, this is going to be tough. But it is going to be the easiest cut of all the cuts we have to make. It'll be the easiest potential start of reform of all we're going to have to reform. 
Now, I gave a lot of examples, but I'm going to give you one last example. And for anyone who's heading towards 65 or above, please understand, especially for the men, that I'm doing this for a reason. Entitlements, in fact, must be addressed, and they must be addressed sensibly. America can no longer assume that money in equals money out times three when in fact it hasn't earned a penny, it's simply been spent in the current generation. That means we're going to have to change a lot of what we do. I'll give you one example. Social Security. Social Security is in fact the closest to almost solvent of, of all of our social welfare programs. Money comes in, so far money hasn't run out. As Carl said, it'll be a few years before we run out. We have the ability to increase slightly the length of time you, till you retire. We could actually address the question honestly of should there be more revenue after we've looked at every part of Social Security. Now this is a tax hawk, but ultimately if the relationship between money in and money out is something we believe in, we have to look at money in. But let's talk about money out for a moment. The greatest rise in change in Social Security is, in fact, an increasing number of people who are able to claim disabilities whose disabilities a generation ago would not have been considered part of Social Security. Another area, and this is my favorite, if you're over 65 and you have a child under 18, now, do the arithmetic, it's usually, if it's his, she isn't over 65. I knew that came as a surprise. <laughs> but for the privilege of having a young wife and a young child, for an old geezer over 65, the government sends you money for those child or children. As, yes, with no means test. It's one of those little things that was back in a time in which they assumed that, that whatever the unfortunate situation, I say that tongue in cheek, unfortunate situation, that you're 70 and you've got a 12-year-old child <laughs> and a grin. <laughs> but there's no means testing. So a choice that somebody makes to have a child is automatically a ticket. Bob White looking to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> the fact is there are means testings that should be done. There are changes in programs and things that we need to do. We need to make sure it's honest. I'll be last but not least. Sequestration right now is cutting back on my oversight committee, you know, my staffing. It's cutting back on inspectors general. It's cutting back on the General Accountability Office. It's the one thing that I'm going to tell you today that if you're going to lobby, and I know many of you will be in Washington next week, Lobby for the fact that at a time in which you know there's waste and fraud, you don't lay off the accountants. You just don't lay off the auditors. The inspectors general need to be boosted. The ability to get the data so that we can find out where the theft is. Just, just one example, and Carl gave one. The most trusted IG uh, historically is retired. His name's Earl Devaney. He's the one that actually shepherded the whole $800 billion recovery uh, budget and did an excellent job. I didn't like the fact that we spent that $800 billion on the stimulus. I didn't like where they chose to spend it, but at least I knew I could figure out where they spent it, and when it was outright fraud, much of it was caught. He has testified under oath repeatedly that not less than 7% of all government spending is, is absolutely spent inconsistent with the law and thus illegal. In Medicare, he believes it could be as much as 20%. Just a few weeks ago, we found $15.5 billion that the state of New York knowingly had allowed to be taken in excess of a law that said how much you could pay for elder care. They were doing it every year. As a matter of fact, the amazing thing is they had 31 change orders at CMS that oversees that, and they were all approved. In other words, a part of government knowingly let New York have as much as $5,000, $5,700 a day for taking care of uh, an elderly patient at a non-hospital environment, something that was limited to $700 a day by law. When we discovered that, the reaction from CMS, this is, you know, who takes care of Medicare, 
and the administration was, we're working on it. <laughs> and we've got a program to phase it out. I said, well, wait a second, what part of illegal and paying too much has to continue? And the answer that Governor Cuomo, because he reacted quickly, and I've got to give him credit, he immediately said to the people who are paying themselves multiples of millions of dollars running these organizations, uh-uh, we have a law, you can't get more than $500,000. He didn't pay them less, he just let them take more less money for the privilege of ripping off the federal and the state taxpayers. We have those kinds of problems in our government. We can change, we will change. But the two things I mentioned with Ms. Dillon, and in fact with the heart and soul of our party, are the parts that can never change. As we look to rein in government, we still have to be a party of the religious right, not in the sense that religious right is one religion, but in the sense that we believe that religion is a major portion of who we are, that our humanity flows from deep beliefs that in fact the inalienable rights come from God through us and we give up a small amount to our country.